Let's explore another way to attach our artwork to our bones using binding and weighting. Now in this video, we're only gonna focus on vector artwork and not raster artwork because that process is slightly different and we'll have a complete video for you on that as well. Now binding and weighting allows us to manipulate the individual vertices of a path using different bones. That means we can do things like make flags wave or arms move in a natural way. There's two parts to this. The first part is the binding process and that exposes the different bones to our path layer. The next step is weighting, and that's telling our individual vertices how much influence each bone should have over it. Let's start with the binding process. To bind a bone to a path layer, we'll first need to select it. We can either do that through the hierarchy by going in and expanding the shape layer and selecting the path layer, or with the shape layer selected, we can hit enter. You'll now notice that when the path layer is selected, we have this bind bones option. If we hit the plus button, the editor changes and lets us know that it's time to select some bones. We can select any individual bone by clicking, but if we wanna select multiple bones, we'll need to hold shift as we click so that we can multi-select. Once we're happy with our selection, we can either hit the done button here or hit the enter key. You'll notice that once we've done that, these bones have changed colors, and these bones now appear in the bind bones section. Now that our path layer knows what bones it can use, it's time to tell the individual vertices how they should use those bones. So let's go into edit vertices mode, either by hitting the button or hitting the inner key with the path selected. If we select any of our vertices, you'll notice that the bones now have this numerical value next to them. That numerical value is the weighting value. Right now, each one of our vertices is weighted to the root bone or this blue one at 100%. That means that this bone has complete control over all of these different vertices. But we can change that by either clicking and dragging or inputting a numerical value. Now you'll notice that the sum total of both of these numbers equals 100. And it doesn't matter if we have one bone or 20 bones, that value is always gonna equal 100%. What we're essentially telling this vertice in particular is that the root bone is going to have the majority of the influence and this yellow bone is going to have some bit of influence over you. Now you'll notice that all of the other ones are still weighted at 100% to the root bone and the reason that they started at 100% with the root bone is because that was the first bone that we selected in the binding process. Had we selected the yellow one first, then all of the vertices would be weighted to the yellow bone. That's a little trick that you can keep in mind to speed up the weighting process. Now let's close out edit vertices mode and rotate some bones. So if we rotate this, you'll notice that only this vertex is actually moving. And that's because this vertex is the only one that's being influenced by this top bone. Now let's explore weighting a little bit more. So let's back up here, go back into edit vertices mode. And I'm now going to convert these top two vertices into asymmetric handles. Now I'm gonna to need to do a little bit of adjustment to make it look like a rectangle again, like this. And you'll now notice that when I select these handles, they also have the ability to be weighted. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two handles here and weight them uh, evenly between these two bones. So the blue bone is gonna have 50% and the yellow bone is gonna have 50%. And then all of these I'm gonna give the yellow bone total control of them. Now let's see what happens when we rotate that top bone. So now you can see that we're actually creating a nice curve using those handles. So if you're smart about how you weight things, then you can get nice curves in your vector paths. Now it's gonna take some practice to figure out what the best weighting strategies are, but through a little bit of work, you'll be able to figure that out. Now let's look at a different example. In this example, we have four different bones, none of which are a part of the same bone chain. The fact that they aren't a part of the same bone chain isn't gonna change the process in the slightest. So let's repeat the process as we did before. We'll select the path layer, hit the bind bones option, hold shift, select our different bones, and then hit done. Once again, let's enter edit vertices mode. 
And instead of changing the weighting by selecting the individual vertices and using this numerical value, we're gonna use the weight tool. Now you can find the weight tool in the bone tool menu, and we can either select the tool here or use the shortcut, which is shift B. Now you'll notice that when we hit shift B, all of those vertices are replaced with this blue ellipse. Now what this blue ellipse is showing us is the weighting pie. So it's showing us which of the bones each vertice is weighted to and by how much. And because this blue bone was the first one that we selected, all of the different vertices are weighted to that bone completely. Now, if we wanna change the weighting, let's say we wanna change the weighting of this vertex and add it to this bone, we can select that vertex, make sure that that bone is selected here. You can see that we can select the different bones and they're being highlighted. And then we can click on the stage and drag. If we drag up, we increase the value of the yellow bone. And if we drag down, we decrease it. So let's make sure we have that weight increased to 100%. And then let's do the same thing with this um, vertex down here and weight it to the purple bone. And then here to the teal bone. And now that we're done waiting, we can hit enter or the done editing button. Now we have four different controls that allow us to control the different vertices of a rectangle. Now, something I mentioned before that will be illustrated in this example is that we're actually moving the path layer and not the shape layer. So I've added in a gradient. And as you can see, that gradient has stoppers and they have a defined location. Now, if I grab these bones and move them, you'll notice that the gradient doesn't actually move. And that's because the gradient is attached to the shape layer. And what we're really doing is moving the path layer around. So keeping that in mind, you can create some really unique lighting effects with shapes and gradients.